What is happening in the world of ride share driving finance this week? In this video, I'm going to discuss what's on everybody's mind. That is the stimulus package uh, that's supposed to carry us through this pandemic. Um, and stick around because at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you whether I think that $600 a week, the FPUC, that bonus money, uh, whether I think something's going to continue and how much. Hey everybody, it is Jay Crater with The Ride Share Guy, drinking my Nespresso on an early Sunday morning. So, for the next six weeks, I'm going to be coming to you on Monday. I'm calling it Monday Ride Share Finances with Jay Crater. And I'm going to give you a summary of what happened in the previous week and how things are looking moving forward. It's a tumultuous time for rideshare drivers. Um, the pandemic is, uh, this is the background. Let's get into some background. The pandemic is raging in certain parts of the country, in Florida, Texas, Arizona, uh, really the southern part, and it's coming up. California, right where I am, uh, we're looking at maybe another shutdown. So there's a lot of, a lot of things happening which are impacting our ability to drive, first of all. And then what we're going to talk about in this video is the finance side of things. All right. So I got a lot to share with you. Let's get right into it. Number one, we are not getting $600 anymore. That ended for me in California yesterday. Today, I have no guarantee, no certainty that we're going to be getting that money. It's over. And, uh, that's a problem, right? Um, as you can see here, it says uh, more than 25 million Americans are set to lose the $600 unemployment boost next week. A lot of people are going to uh, be suffering over the next few weeks because uh, Congress has not uh, put anything together yet. Right. Number two, how did we get here, right? How did we get here? You know, you may say, how did we get here? As you can see in this graph, uh, so there's the rest of the world at the bottom. And then the pink, yeah, the pink red kind of color, you can see goes all the way up, all the way up. And uh, that's us. That's the United States. So unlike the European Union, who uh, handled it and then were able to maintain it, we here in the United States, we never handled it and, uh, and quite the opposite. Rather than handle it, we have gotten worse and worse and worse and worse, up to 65,000 cases uh, a day. It's, it's quite remarkable. So because of that, because of our inability to handle this, um, we, sh we should have been at that point now where the economy is really opening up. And this whole conversation about continuing the $600, we wouldn't have to have it right now. But that's not the case. In fact, it's worse now than it was back then. So that's why uh, this decision is going to impact so many people. Number three, the financial cliff. So as I said, 25 million Americans are looking at not getting that money. And the other thing that's happening is the uh, moratorium on evicting people for not paying their rent also comes to an end. So a lot of people um, are going to uh, be losing the place that they live. Uh, a lot of businesses are going to suffer, right? Because all that money, which uh, those 25 million people had is going to stop. So they're not going to go to restaurants. They're going to be buying less um, services, right? Less haircuts, less uh, things like that, uh, not going to be able to pay the rent, not going to be able to mortgage. All of that is going to get tamped down uh, because of this situation where there's no jobs to go get, right? Because a lot of the country is shutting down and uh, people like Uber drivers don't want to go back to work because it's risky. Uh, you know, we're seeing an upswing in San Francisco. It's getting worse, not better. Number four, What's wrong with our government? How did we get to this place where 25 million Americans are now just having to wait? There's going to be at least three to four weeks without that money. And 
Uh, it could be that's it. Could be there is no more money, right? So how did we get here? So I'm showing you here, uh, this is Nancy Pelosi. So we've got a battle here between the Democrats and the Republicans. The Democrats two months ago uh, put together something called the Heroes Act, which was supposed to pay us the $600 boost uh, all the way until January of next year. Then we can see the unemployment bonus has been working, so why do Republicans want to slash it? And in this article, which is from Business Insider, it says the $600 weekly enhancement unemployment that was part of March's stimulus is set to expire July 31st, right? But for most of us, that means it ended yesterday. Um, you scroll down, analysts from the Kellogg School of Management of Northwest University analyzed how people spent their stimulus checks and spending patterns suggest that many people were using the funds to obtain necessities and catch up on bills, right? With the coronavirus pandemic throwing many non-essential workers out of the labor force, the bonus has functioned like a universal basic income, a minimum income guaranteed by the government, and it worked. Then we see that for the first time in 15 weeks, weekly claims turn higher as coronavirus jobs uh, crisis inflicts more damage. That means more people are getting unemployed than less and that's the that's the first time that number has not declined it's actually gone up and to top it all off we were supposed to get this bill last week right um, everyone was excited to see what the republicans were going to put together but this is the latest news right here mitch mcconnell hopes to send next coronavirus relief bill to house within three weeks three weeks. Wow. Imagine that. It's just like this callous disregard. So here's what's happening. We got the Democrats. They're saying $600. Keep it going. Keep it going all the way till January, right? The Republicans are saying, no, 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 no. It's a disincentive for people to go back to work, even though there's not any jobs to go back to work because the economy's still shutting down, right? So the, the uh, and, and then within the Republicans, they're fighting over how do they do this, right? How do, how, do we, how do they get money back into the economy? So the Republicans are figuring out what they want to propose, and they got to kind of jive it with the White House. Then once that's done, then the Republicans and the Democrats have to sort it out and come to a compromise, right? So... With the current timing that I just shared, which is Mitch McConnell saying it's going to be another three weeks, then we've got to go through some negotiations, which could easily come to brinksmanship where one side says, no, we're not taking it. You know, and if everyone's got to wait, they've got to wait, which has happened in the past. It could be a month. It could be six weeks. It could be two months. And then at that point, we don't know if it's going to be retroactive or not. So it's just a CF. I mean, it's just a, a mess for those of us who are kind of counting on that money. Um, if you think about it, 600 a week for four weeks, that's like $2,500 less per month uh, that we're gonna be getting at least for the next month, maybe the month after that. And then uh, I'll tell you what I think we are actually going to get. Number five, so what's on the table? So as you can see here, a couple of headlines. Tsunami of evictions feared as extra 600 unemployment payments end. A federal eviction moratorium ends this week, putting 12 million tenants at risk. And then I put together this chart for you. So what's on the table? So the stimulus payment is similar to the CARES Act. So they're saying they're going to do the $1,200 similar to before. Some sort of UIPUA extension. Now, the, the lead, latest we've heard is it's going to be 70% of what you earned, right? Which is challenging because most of the PUA recipients never even put in an income uh, amount that got verified. And I've read articles that said that if that's the case, the state uh, unemployment offices are not equipped to do those calculations quickly. And that could delay things another two to three months. So let's hope they don't end up doing this 70% thing, although that's the latest, most likely option. 
and they just pick it pick a dollar amount now they could pick 200 they could pick 400 they could pick 600 and then there's going to be some amount of time for the extension uh, they were talking about a payroll tax cut but that seems to have been nixed the republicans can't agree on that a liability protection for businesses this is something the republicans very much want and then funding for testing uh, funding for schools and then funding for state and local governments so all of that is on the table so you can see it's not a simple thing uh, it just boggles the mind why the republicans waited until this week to start having this conversation when they could see this cliff from, you know, a month away. The Democrats saw it two months away. The Republicans are just now getting to it. So that's the current state of finance for rideshare drivers. What are the key takeaways here? First of all, it's a mess. It's just a mess. You would think our government would be able to seamlessly extend something for us instead of having this gap, especially when the eviction moratorium is over and people are going to be kicked out of where they live, um, it's really going to, going to hurt the economy. Yep. Uh, my prediction is that uh, it's going to take about another month, at which point they're going to arrive at the figure of $400. That's what I think it's going to uh, get compromised to, and it will be retroactive. Okay. Now that doesn't help us during the month of August, but um, I, I, I foresee getting a big payment at $400. That's approximately $800 less per month. Um, okay, you know, I don't think I don't think the Democrats have enough uh, pull to get $600 all the way through January. That'd be great. We'd all love that, but uh, I don't see that actually happening. Now, the reason I feel pretty confident that there is going to be an extension for a significant amount of time is the Republicans and the president want to win some elections in November. And we're all gonna remember what they do, right? And we get to go to the ballot box in November. So it behooves the Republicans to put together a package that keeps these 25 million people happy so that <laughs> they're not an automatic vote for uh, Joe Biden, right? And uh, they don't lose a whole bunch of congressional races. So that's gotta be, uh, on the back of their minds, um, as much as they want to keep everything low, that we are in a bad situation in this country. We have mismanaged the uh, pandemic. People are not able to freely go back to work. Um, we don't know when actually this is pandemic is going to actually start to flatten out because at this point it's like going at hyper speed. And, um, you know, for their own self interest, they're going to put something together, extended at least through November. And I think it'll be pretty significant, but not probably as big as we've seen it so far. That's what I think. Those are my key takeaways. I want to say thank you so much for watching the video. This is Jay Crater. And uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. That lets more people see it. If you haven't subscribed yet to our YouTube channel, subscribe. And definitely set up notifications so you can be part of our next YouTube live. All right. Uh, I'll be back next Monday. All right. I'm going to do this for six weeks in a row. And uh, I look forward to telling you what happened uh, in the week in finance for rideshare drivers. Y'all go out and have a great day and be safe out there.